describe you as a social conservative and more of an economic model. And let me clarify by saying that in your time in the states and in the Senate, you have supported tax increases. Some of your, well, some of your party didn't, some of your party fought against them, some of your party uh, fiercely fought against them. And since she's been in Congress, well, Congress certainly has, since she voted for some uh, tax increases, uh, so she voted for the 1993 uh, Budget Act, uh, but she's also voted to cut taxes. How, how would you compare and contrast your record when looking at it sort of from a macro perspective, it's very similar in terms of the willingness to support a tax increase sometimes and the willingness to cut taxes? How, how are you different? And how, how, how would voters from Arkansas know how you're going to vote on tax issues when you go to Washington based on the That's a good question, David. It's a, it's great to show that very much put us on the spot like that. But that's where we need to be, in my opinion, always. Uh, and I, uh, I guess that uh, maybe the description she used probably, I think that's fair. I really do, and, and, and I think that, uh, that we need to be ready to give an account. We had a Republican caucus down at the headquarters during the session, and we had a fellow come in there uh, from a group and said, we want you to find sign an anti-tax pledge. And he said, some of you signed it and then you voted. It wasn't I, because I didn't sign it, but there was a fellow, and y'all don't know who it was probably, that signed that tax pledge and then he voted for a tax and they were getting on his case. I asked that guy that day, and this is the kind of guy I am, this guy out being when I go to Washington. Because frankly, <laughs> uh, I, I, I've got a job and I'll have one when I, when I get through and fill whatever way it is. I said, hey, you've got an anti-spending uh, anti pledge in Washington. I might consider signing one of those, but an anti-tax pledge. But I have a, I have an aversion to those because I, I know folks that sign those things and turn right around and then just do the opposite. And uh, would, frankly, but would you do that? I mean, you, you seem to be a guy. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to sign the pledge. And here's why: this vote and the one I have now in the Arkansas Senate, I represent the most populous district in the Arkansas Senate. That's Benton County. It's, it's the fastest, it's, in fact, you can look at the history, it's the fastest growing district in this state. And I'm proud to represent it. But that vote does not belong to me, it belongs to 100,000 people that I represent. And I'm not going to let some outfit from Washington, D.C. or anywhere else come in here and get me to sign Arkansas's vote over to do what they want me to do. I'm not going to do it. I'll listen to them and I, I want to listen to what they have to say. But I've seen that go on down here. And, uh, and, and it just doesn't work. Now, specifically, here's how I, I have voted for a tax. I voted to increase the income tax on a surcharge because we were running out of money this state and either had to do it or turn the people out of the prisons and, and stop the Medicare and so forth so because we were not planning ahead then. And let me tell you something, folks. You need to understand this in Arkansas. In, two, in this 03 session and the 05 session, under the, in, in my work on the budget committee and some others, senators, the, the people that were running it then, we stopped the, the spending in Arkansas, spending all of it, A, B, C, C, 1. You recall, we used to spend it all, we just kept spending it all. Well, there are those two sessions, we stopped that. We're not going to do that. And that's why we had a surplus at the end of those years. But folks are going to go right back to the same thing now. And we've got folks running around right now saying, oh, Arkansas has a balanced budget. Yes, we require a valid budget, but they don't tell you the rest of the story. And that the fact of the matter is that we owe the federal government right now $200 million, Arkansas does. And in another year and a half, it'll be $390 million for unemployment taxes. And to run around and say, hey, and you know, we're going to pay those one way or the other. You know, the Chinese are going to pay us. But to get up and say, oh, we've got a balanced budget. We don't have Let me tell you, they need to tell you the truth about it. We need to tell you the rest of the story. So, when we took that surcharge off, we didn't have to do it the next time because we haven't been spending anymore. We have a category now, and you don't get out of that, and the governor, to his credit, and I asked him to do it, but because I asked him, I suggested the budget committee, Governor Beebe must stop it before we run out of money. And I said the same thing at my board leadership and Chrysler leadership this morning. We don't have GM leadership anymore. They done took that away. But anyway, so we... Well, let me ask you this. Let, let, let me finish 
shown this. The one other thing on this tax deed is that it's with them, the tobacco tax. Here's my philosophy as a businessman, as a, as a, a senator on your Arkansas. If you're going to do it, you pay it. 